Today is my Friday off of work, and that only means one thing, that it's time for a project. So let's head to the project cabinet. Let's see, what do we have in here? Um, no, not yet, coming soon. No, no, RC car, maybe. Ooh. Let's see, what do I have here? Nice. RTX 4070, power supply. Ugh. Looks like storage, thermal. I think we got all the parts here to build a computer. And you might be asking, what about the case? And I'll tell you, what about this segue to our sponsor? Nope. All right, as you can tell from my subscriber count, I don't have any, anyone to pay for this for me. I don't get to be like Linus with 10 million subscribers and uh, have these companies send me free stuff that I get to build just to showcase their products. But I did, did build this PC uh, for a very specific reason. Number one requirement is that it needed to be reliable uh, number two is that it needed to be consistent, be able to run for a long period of time. I guess that's a part reliable. Um, secondly, it needs to be able to run gaming software really well because I'm going to use this PC for simulation. Um, simulating what? You will have to get subscribed so you can see the follow-up video for this and we can go over there. The case that we're using here is a Corsair 5000D that has pretty decent front I.O. with two USB 3s, a USB-C, and a headphone microphone jack, power button, tempered glass side panel, lots of space for expansion in the back. Um, and also, lots of space to hide cables over on this side. The other thing that this case has that I really need because it's going to live out here in part of my shop slash office space is that it has these removable dust screens. So any dust that might sneak over from working over here to over on the other side of that table. Hopefully it'll protect all the components inside. We're also building this PC on my welding table that I built. If you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check that out because it's it's been pretty cool. If you're subscribed, you probably have seen that video because, <laughs> because most of you from my YouTube analytics have subscribed off of this welding video. And I haven't been able to do as much welding on as I wanted because life keeps getting in the way. Ain't nobody got time for that. But anyway, I will try to remember to put a tag over in this corner or something to the link to this video and how I built it. I would build it over on this table, but this is full of all of my experiments currently <laughs> and some of this I have for, sh for shorts. This is going to be a magazine fed high speed marshmallow delivery device. So get subscribed for that too because I like to do all kinds of random stuff and then put it on the internet. Hopefully some of it's cool. All right, let's get into building this computer and why this computer is tough. I picked the Tough Z790 Plus Wi-Fi motherboard, the Tough Overclocked 4070 Ti, and the Tough Gaming 850 watt power supply, gold rated, all because Asus offers a 10 year warranty on this stuff. So if I ever have a problem with this computer, I really want, uh, with the most expensive components, I really want that 10 year warranty. I guess let's quit talking and start building. I will also, just so you know, uh, uh, the link to this entire build is in the, in the description as a PC parts picker link. I don't get any commissions from any of this. I am just giving you this PC build. It is partially based off of one of Linus's builds where he built a PC that's supposed to be reliable for his sister-in-law, which I will also link, try to link in the description below if you wanna see that but I did update it, uh, I did improve it, and you might be asking, how do you improve on, on Linus's PC build? Isn't he tech Jesus? Well, no, that's Steve from Gamers Nexus, and I will tell you why as I build this computer. Meanwhile, I have crippling depression. All right, hey guys, this is probably about two weeks later after I did the actual computer build. Um, I did have to remove this panel and the fan, the fan, 
bracket that goes right there because it made it easier to cable manage and I pulled a lot of that stuff out so I could get the motherboard out. So let's start with putting in the CPU. Here we go. So this is the i5-13600K. It's overclockable. There's a little tiny arrow right there on the corner. That's what everybody says to look for. And then you're supposed to line it up with this little tiny arrow also on the CPU socket. There's matching little nubs right here inside the CPU socket. So you just wanna make sure that you drop this in here and not get any of those pins bent. And then you pop this guy down. Pressure that guy in place. So a lot of PC building is actually pretty simple. If you find yourself trying to shove something in, force something into a space, it's not where it goes. At least that's my experience. All right, so I already have the back plate on for the cooler, which we're using the Noctua. I need to turn those that way. See, I already did this one, so I'm still making mistakes. So you don't have to worry about it if it's your first time building a PC. Noctua includes two of these massive fans. I just made the mistake putting these on the top and the bottom instead of on the left and right. Live and learn. Just so you guys know, the ones that have made it this far in the video, I'm not making these videos to tell you how to do stuff or what to do, but to hopefully give you the confidence to try some things that you aren't necessarily trained in. My IO shield is too tall here, so I can't add this fan. The fan's too thick. So the thing that I improved over Linus's build is that I went with a different motherboard, full size, obviously, to fit the case. Improved the case so it would have an improved airflow and then also, I changed my power supply out to, um, I think the one he used was also fully modular, uh, but I went with an 850 watt. So, let's show you how this goes into the case and get this thing cable managed up again. And zoom you in a little bit, because the next step is connecting all of these cables. So the process I take is I get all of the cables that need to be plugged into the motherboard and I plug them into the motherboard first and then I fish them around to the power supply. I do wanna make sure that you follow the power supply on this one because it's got the different cables that need to be plugged in in different places. For some reason it's not posting. All right, I got it hooked up to a monitor. Only the truth. <laughs> Um, the issue I'm having is that, come on, focus, is that whenever I populate this second RAM slot that's supposed to be populated with those to run a dual channel, it's not posting. It leaves the yellow uh, DRAM light on the motherboard. So I think I'm going to have to work with Asus because I've tried both sticks in this slot and it posts both times. I've tried both sticks in that slot just individually and it won't post and I've tried sticks in both slots and it won't post. So I think I'm gonna have to use that Asus 10 year warranty that they promise on their tough products and get a replacement. Anyway, let's watch the performance of the PC when it was working. It shouldn't fail from just unplugging the RAM and then plugging it back in. And for those of you who are subscribed, thank you, you're legends. And also everyone who stayed to this point in the video, also legends. So you see both RAM modules lit up with RGB. Um, when I have it in dual channel mode, that yellow-ish, yellowy orange -ish DRAM light stays on and it won't post. So I can't get into the BIOS, I can't do anything like that. Ah! I already updated this to the latest firmware. It's running the latest firmware. I tried resetting the BIOS. Uh, it still won't post no, uh, no matter what I do when it's in that dual channel mode. So I think there's an issue with the motherboard. So what I did to troubleshoot further, I bought the exact same motherboard. 
Um, so I've got to swap everything over now and see if it'll still work. All right, all installed, moment of truth. Hey, there we go. Dual channel working. Everything appears to be in order. So I will get the BIOS updated and everything installed, and then we will run some benchmarks. See you in one second. All right, everything's installed, BIOS is updated. We are going to run the Time Spy benchmark from 3 Mark and see how it goes. All right, 22,000. Do uh, I don't idea? think that's too bad I'm for this price of computer. I mean, obviously you can do better with those other people's scores. All right, I was just running Cinebench, and then I got an update saying that Windows 11 is ready for my PC. So it made me curious, does Windows 11 make your PC run faster? I don't know. I appreciate all of you for watching this video to the very end. Um, it has been a roller coaster of uh, make sure parts work. I do want to make this an airplane themed PC because it is for my flight simulator So if you have any cool ideas of what I can do to make this airplane themed besides just putting this uh, Sticker on the side panel. I would love to hear about it. So Everything on this PC would look cool. I hope so. I want to hear your ideas thirdly listen to how quiet it is and this is with the side panel off it is insanely quiet, which I think is a wonderful feature for an air-cooled PC. All right, now the video's over. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.